Uh, presiding officer, it's always interesting to listen to what uh, opposition parties have to say. And there are many ironies emerge from listening. Um, one of the ironies, I think, is that the strongest supporters of the United Kingdom, by far, and they've done it in referendum, are the people of Gibraltar. The people of Gibraltar who 95.9% of voted to remain in the EU. So it's not simply the UK government discriminating against Scotland and refusing to engage and to listen. They're being absolutely fair. They're against everything that anybody apart from their own settled ideas say. The Gibraltarians, the most loyal of UK citizens, the most committed to remaining in the EU, are being ignored. Now, I hold no brief for the Gibraltarians. I have met ministers from there, uh, and it's always interesting to do so. Now, Adam Tompkins, uh, in his remarks, uh, and I think I quote, we want the fullest possible participation in European markets. And indeed, that is what the UK government paper says. It uses the mutually beneficial customs union phrase on one dozen occasions. So we know that the UK government is committed to achieving that. So how can we actually achieve that? And of course, the strongest, most certain way of achieving a mutually beneficial uh, European market is by being in the single market. Now, Douglas Ross took us back to the referendum of 2014, and he told us it was a very simple question. Should Scotland be an independent country? Yes or no? In other words, it told us nothing whatsoever about the EU in relation to Scotland's attitudes to the EU in 2014. That is the assertion I've had from Douglas Ross. What in turn was the question that was asked in 2016? Should the UK be in the European Union? Yes or no? It told us nothing whatsoever about our attitude to the single market. It told us nothing whatsoever about our attitude to free movement of peoples. It only answered the one simple question. We have it confirmed by Douglas Ross. So it's perfectly permissible to stay within the single market, within the European economic area, within EFTA, and still be consistent with the result delivered on the 23rd of June 2016. And that is the argument that's being put uh, from the benches over here today. Uh, Adam Tompkins, of course, uh, I'm afraid in five minutes, simply not possible. Adam Tompkins is, of course, a young and inexperienced politician, uh, by comparison certainly with me on both counts, and has forgotten, therefore, or never been aware of the considerable number of occasions where the UK Parliament, particularly the House of Lords, has amended legislation to affect Scottish competencies in legislative and administrative matters without her having the opportunity to bring forward a legislative consent motion. Now, he would, I think by his remarks, suggest that an unconstitutional position to be in. Maybe not. But it certainly is not one I can support. Now, I intervened on Ross Greer on the subject of whether what the government has published is a white paper. There's only four lines in the UK Parliament's uh, description of white papers. It's clear it's a white paper when it comes before the bill. And what have we actually got? We've got a white paper that purports to have 77 pages in it. Well, six of them are blank, four of them at the beginning are just the introduction, is actually 66 pages. The Scottish Government published 650 pages uh, when uh, going into the 2014 referendum. What other things have we got? A white paper on travel Scot choices for Scotland from the UK, 114 pages. On to on prosperous communities, local government, 247 pages, uh, 128 pages on educational excellence. We can see that this is a shoddy, inadequate piece of work, uh, presiding officer. In fact, this white paper is no white paper whatsoever. It is the white flag that is giving in to people elsewhere. It will give us nothing for Scotland 
and it will sell out our fishing communities once again. That's the Tory plan. That's what they're going to do.